Hello everybody, welcome to our first more in-depth tutorial about the new vegetation model implemented in EnviMed. As you might have seen uh, on the website or in our tutorials, we have introduced a complete new way of modeling vegetation, especially trees, in the recent version of EnviMed 4.5. Well, before vegetation have been available in two different tastes. One was the one-dimensional vegetation mainly used for very simple structures like grass, crop or, or hedges. And the other one was the thing we call 3D vegetation, which was more a generic kind of vegetation like you see on the screen here. So the, the differences between the different trees, the different kind of vegetation were in basically the form the size of the tree crown, is it a shape of a sphere, is it a more rectangular shape and so on. So there were no forms or differences in terms of species, there were no elements like twigs, branches or stems in that model. So basically there was no chance to identify a tree in terms of its species. So the lime tree looks like an oak and an oak looks like a pine tree, for example. So just slightly differences maybe in the form that the pickles, pixels of the leaf area density have been arranged. So in order to overcome this problem um, and to make the first step towards the new tree path, which will be implemented next year, um, we decided to go to more detailed and more structured tree models. Other way to do it was to find a tree model which we called QSM, which stands for Quantified Structural Model of Trees. And what this means, I'll give you simply an example. When you just open the new Envimet version, you see there's quite a number of new trees introduced in the model. Actually, this is much more trees inside the database than it had ever been before just because now we can make differences between the different species and now it, it's, it really doesn't matter if it's an oak tree or is it a pine tree or is it a lime tree. So that's just a little example. So move away from these generic forms, this sphere form, and just pick one of the new trees which are here for example. I will just um, pick out um, one I like very much. For example, the leaf the Japanese pagoda tree. So I just click that and you see in Albero the things are pretty much the same. So the new trees are li lining into the same database and the same concept like the old trees do. And when you work with spaces, um, you can see you can use these new trees exactly in the same way as you have used the old 3D trees before. So about the difference you will see in Albero. So I have selected the pagoda tree here. So here it is and it's already um, rotating. I just will stop that for a second. And you will see the basic concept still that we do have voxels or cubes of leaf area density because this is with which the Envimat model in the end will work because it needs to have this grid cell information about leaf area density. But you also see there is much more how these pixels and voxels are generated. And you see um, this tree is much more structured. It's not just a shape of leaves. It's uh, having parts where the light can pass through. It has parts where the tree is more dense. It has other parts where the tree is more light. So just like you know a tree in, in real nature. So when you look at a tree or you lie in summer below a tree, you will see even if it's this one tree, there is still a lot of patches of different densities in this tree of light areas of uh, approximately completely blocked, blocked areas completely blocking the sun and other areas where there are some twigs and some branches interacting. And this is the same here. And you see the, the most important concept here is now that these um, areas of leaves are generated based on the skeleton of the tree. And you already see the skeleton of the tree. If we move on here and we can, if we turn off the rusted leaf, when we go to the drawing options, so we can turn off, I will go back to these um, drawing options later on. So just for the showcase, I will turn off the rusted leaf and then you'll see um, the skeleton of the tree. So the basic form with stems with twigs with branches of which the tree consists and of course um, I can turn on the individual leaves which takes some more 
um, calculation time, but um, it's still quite possible. And you see, this is how the tree is represented in the computer memory. That means it has a branch, it has twigs, and on the twigs there are the leaves. And in the end, the structure, the three-dimensional structure of leaf area densities, so as we know it from the um, environment model, will be calculated every time the tree is constructed based on the information, based on counting how many leaves are actually constructed in it. So, but how does it work? How is such a tree constructed? It looks very complicated, isn't it? Well, actually, yes and no. It is complicated, it is complex, because it has a lot of segments, it has a lot of branches and a lot of structure in it. But there are two ways, actually, how we can generate the tree in a very simple form. And let's, in this tutorial, have a look at the basic form, the basic algorithm that is implemented in Envimat. And this basic algorithm is called the Lindemeyer system, or in short, L systems. So if you select one of these trees, of these QSM-based trees, you see this with a little Q in the beginning of the name, you have the option, if it is based on an L system, to start the L system editor. You just click on this little button here. And then it moves straight into the editor, just just as to the screen size. And you see the structure of the tree. Basically, it's the same like in the preview, just much more bigger. So I will turn off the rested leaves and turn off the individual leaves so that we can actually see how it is constructed. And I can also turn on a bit of a better quality so that you see the base form of this tree is actually the cylinders of which the tree is constructed. And uh, the basic question, of course, is how can we generate such a tree? Uh, it looks very complicated. How should I draw it? Have I, to, have I to place every cylinder, every twig, every branch in the memory of the computer and this takes me for ages to construct a even a tree like this and this is not a really big tree what about an oak tree uh, 40 meters high well the good thing is um you may not see it completely here so i will just um turn off the um, elements and show the reference situation here okay and then okay, turn off the rotation So it looks very complex, but in the end it's like a fractal. So that means it has a general structure, it has a general rule how it is constructed. And this rule can be simple or it can be more complex, but this rule is never as complex as a complete tree is. The rule on the complexity of the tree that actually established through generating a repetition of this rule over and over and over. So it's iterating the same rule again and again and again. So this is what we call self-similarity of the thing. That means the little branching structure here, like you see, for example, here, that you have a, a big branch here and a small branch going to the side. This repeats in the next level. It's the same here. It's the same structure basically on that side here. It's also a big branch that continues and then makes a little move to the left or to the right. And just like here, it's the same structure. It moves like here and makes a branch to that side. And it continues. It's always the same repeating form. And the way this is done is using the L system rules. And um, these L system rules, this is an old system that has been invented back in the 1970s by a guy called Aristide Lindemeyer. And this guy um, was a mathematician and he was also a biologist. And he started to combine these things and he realized that many things in our world, especially in the biological words, is self-repeating. That means the big structures, if you think of a fern, for example, can be found again in the smaller structures and the same structure then again in the even smaller structure of the tree, fern, plant, cell. So there are quite a number of examples in nature where this self-repeating context is there. And he said, okay, that let's, let us develop a mathematical system which allows us to produce this self-generating processes. And this is how it's done. So if you see this little button here, 
you see we can edit the else system rules and this opens the editor which maybe for the first thing looks a bit complex but it isn't at all because it's just a uh, contains a set of grammar that means it contains a set of replacing um, letters with other letters and in the end each letter means a drawing system so there are two things that we have to um, explain the one thing is what about this drawing system and the second thing is what about these um, self-similarity how does that work so let's start with these linear system and how they work Remember, these Lindemeyer systems or else systems are a general mathematical approach for self-repeating systems. So they do not have to do anything with plants or trees in the very first row in common. So they can be used for any kind of self-similarity, like generating fractals of crystals. <clears throat> they can be used for generating uh, music, for example. But in this case, we use them for generating trees. But how does it work? Well, let's have a look at the very simple system. It basically is a replacement system of letters or a replacement system of symbols where letters are one special kind of symbols. So let's start with a single letter to keep things easy. You can, of course, start with a quite a number of letters, but let's just start with the letter B, for example. And this very start, this is called the axiom of such a L system. So the, the start or the seat. So that what we else need, we need a replacement rule. For example, we have a replacement rule that says whenever you find the letter B in your string, in your system, replace it by the letter A. Okay, so we do this in the first iteration round. So we take the, the string, the initial string with B and replace the B with an A. Well, that's it. So it would be very boring if this would be all. But of course, we need more rules. We can have an endless set of rules, but in our case, we have a second rule only. And the second rule is um, whenever you find in this new term, in this new string, whenever you find the letter A, replace it with the letter A, B. And here you see how the self-similarity comes in place, because now the letter B is reintroduced in the system. So the next round, the A becomes an A, B. So that's all. And still, so in the next round, this was the round number two, in round number three, the string we work with now is A, B. And once again, from the very beginning, the two replacement rules are still valid. So whenever the system, the computer finds the letter B, it will replace it with the letter A. And whenever it finds the letter A, it will replace it with the letter A, B. So our word A, B, in the third round, in the next round, will extend. It will become A, B, A. So the A becomes an A, B. So this was the letter A. And the B, again, this is the second, the first rule, returns to be the letter A. And then again, fourth iteration, same rules apply again. So the letter A now again is replaced by A. The letter B is replaced by A. And the letter A, this, the third letter here, is then replaced by AB. So we didn't get ABBA here, but we have can change the system so that we get another new ABBA in this system. And it goes on and goes. You see the system then of course really grows very quickly because um, the number of letters increases with F iteration round and with each iteration round the new replacement rule applies, applies and the string grows longer and longer. So in the end, starting with the letter B, as the axiom and these two replacement rules after five iterations we have a term which is called a b a a so you see it on the screen so it's quite a long term and it's self similarity that means if we have a sixth seventh and eighth iteration it starts to grow very very fast so that's the basic concept of the l system you have a starting letter or starting words your axiom and you have a bunch of replacement rules which tells the system which letter or which symbol has to be replaced by which other symbol. And as long as each replacement rule again contains a symbol that will be then part of another rule, the recursive self-similarity effect comes into play. Okay, but wait. So we have A, B, A, A, B, A, 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 B, A, but how does this become a tree? 
So there's a second thing, which is funnily also from the 70s of the last century, um, which is called the turtle logic. Um, this again has nothing to do with trees, and it also has nothing to do with the L system. Very funny, so we are combining two things together in order to get a third thing that we want to have. So this turtle logic is, was originally done for children to understand the logic of coding and the logic of drawings in the coding. And the idea, I took this um, nice little graphic here from turtle360.net, um, which says it's just this turtle is something that draws on the screen. So where we have a starting position of a turtle, which is somewhere on the screen. Oops, sorry. Which is somewhere on the screen. And then you have commands you can issue to the turtle. You can, so for example, you can tell the turtle move forward 80 steps and then draws a straight line. And the next command the turtle understand would be turn. For example, turn right for 60 degrees. So it turns the head to the right for 60 degrees. It doesn't do anything right now. It just keeps the position, it memorizes its position and waits for the next command. The next command would be again, move forward 80 steps. So, but these 80 steps are now drawn in a different direction because the turtle always moves forward. And as he looks now 60 degrees to the right compared to the original position, it now, the line that it generates now with this drawing command is into a different position. And then you repeat the same thing. So it still stands here. And then again, the command is issued turn right 60 degrees, but always relatively to the position of the turtle or the view of the turtle right now. So it just turns another 60 degrees and then again moves forward 80 steps, for example. And again and again and again until after repeating the whole thing six times. In this case, it's back on its starting position and has drawn this um, geometric figure. So you see, um, it's a very simple structure and reading this algorithm here, it's not really clear that in the end you will get this uh, geometric figure out of it or looking at the second or the third um, example on the screen here, you probably will not figure out that this algorithm here will generate this geometric figure. But that's the concept um, we use in the tree modeling so that we have a turtle and now where is the letter thing? These letters, the A, the B, the C, the D, or whatever we want, these are commands for the turtle to do something. Move forward, turn left, turn right, turn back, memorize the position, repeat it again. And this is how um, a sequence of letters then will come into a geometrical or, geog uh, or geographical representation of these letters. So if you look at this example here, you see it goes straight forward into the direction of the tree. And you also see the similarity of the structure which I just mentioned before, because this branching structure here, for example, you have will repeat here and it will repeat in every little position of the tree. It's always the same branching structure and it's going finer and finer just by repeating it and repeating, storing the turtle position, repeating the same operation again and again, just as you see here in this algorithm. So this algorithm is calling itself, it's a recursive algorithm. And of course, some of the parameters are changed. For example, the parameter A, which says move forward A, is decreased by 10, whatever it is, each time it's caught. So this is why these segments are going smaller and smaller each time the turtle is um, iterating through this um, drawing process. So that's basically the idea how we can produce, first, how we can produce these, this alphabet by the Lindemeyer system to get a very large self-repeating structure of commands and then interpret these commands into drawing options. So now, which are the options the turtle does understand? And of course, this is a two-dimensional turtle. We need a 3D tree, so we need three-dimensional drawing commands for the turtle. But the, the principle is completely the same. So let's go back to Albero and um, the L system editor I've just mentioned before. And here see on the left hand, uh, sorry, on the right hand side of the screen, you see the turtle commands which are available to the turtle. So the drawing command F, for example, move forward for a controlled length or the small letter F, move forward for a small step. 
Then you do have the turning commands, just like said before, uh, the plus and the minus for turn left, turn right. As we are in a three-dimensional system, of course, we do not only turn left and right, but we can also do the pitch up, pitch down with the nose and rotate along our own axis. So that's, that's a bit more complicated because it's a three-dimensional system and it has actually three degrees of freedom where the turtle can move. But the other system is the same. So here we do have our axiom. So this is a longer starting word. So this is what has been the B in our example before. Now it's a little bit longer than a B. Um, and these are the replacement rules. So whenever you find the letter A, replace it with this. When you ever find the letter B, replace it by that, or C or F. And these are the replacement rules. And of course, the information of how often do I iterate this. So the example here with our tree, this is to iterate this five times. So we can just make do that. So we already knew the tree. And if we have a look, how does the L system look after five iterations? You see, this is a very long, long string containing of little drawing commands. So it doesn't make much sense for a, for a human to read that, but it's still fitting. Uh, it's, it's crawlable. But if we do um, change it, for example, and say, OK, I do not want five iterations, but I want, for example, seven iterations, it really begins to be much more complex. You see how fast this or how simple this tree structure has now grown and also gives the impression of a more major tree. Just by adding the inter replacements from five iterations to seven iterations without any changes in the system. And this is like very similar to how biology actually works, because each year when a new um, branch is created or a new um, twig is generated, it's basically repeating its personal um, history of being generated. So um, the self similarity tree is really there in nature. And you see this tree in, after seven iteration looks uh, very mature. It's also now much, much larger already, it's so a meter height. And if we, if we sorry, reduce the complexity to, say, five or three iterations, you see the tree looks very young, but it also and already has its original structure, its original logic of branching, um, the typical angles that are typical for a tree species, for example, or the number of branches that are departing from a, a principal branch. And you can also, um, in this L system editor, modify the default angles to make it larger or smaller. And also in this system, uh, the physics is already included. This is something why we have designed this high complex system. Besides of being able to reproduce more realistic trees, we want to make calculations with the tree skeleton to put in wind forces, to put in other forces, to see how the tree reacts, how it deforms, and which forces are actually taking place on the branches, on the twigs, and to have an estimate later on, will this branch, for example, break? So if we turn on or turn off the physics, you see there are slight differences because of the gravity. And let's have a look how it can very easily, we can generate a tree basically out of nothing. So we just wait a minute so that it recovers and say just we add a new um, empty QSM plant. So we go to, to user plants and say we just um, add a simple, very simple plant based on the QSM model. And we, this is starting with a very simple L system. So we stop the animation and go to the L system rules. We can very easily uh, rip place the rules by our own rules. For example, we can just say we have a letter F and this letter F means just move forwards and you say I put in um, three Fs. That means um, that this um, tree, actually you don't see much because it's just moving forward three times. And so we can say, for example, turn right with a minus and then Again, move forward three times. So this is what, what happens then. It moves three times forward, then it turns to the right, and then it creates this little branch here. So add some more branches here, make it longer. 
So there's quite a long branch now. And so you see now the, the simulation of physics is turned off. So uh, the DL system doesn't know about gravity. But if we turn the, the physics on, you see how these trees start to bend. Oh, it's already much too long, so I just reduce it a bit so it's not completely unrealistic. Okay. So being that using that L system, you are able to generate your own trees, and it's not really um, complicated. Okay, it takes some while to to get used to this um, L system um, programming idea, but then you, if you have a photograph of a tree or, or sketching of a tree, you will be very quickly able to um, reproduce these kinds of trees in in the Endymet system and use them in your model, and later on be able when the tree pass comes up to make physics simulation in the tree model. So let's just go very briefly back to one of the, the pre-made trees, for example the Japanese pagoda tree I already showed as an example, and to use the, the L screen editor just to move you a bit around the different options we have. So these are the skeleton of the tree without um, any information. And on this side we already knew the L system, um, rule system we have edited, but there are also a number of um, parameters you can set or control um, which influence this, the type of the structure of the tree. So for example I showed the, the default branching angle which you can reduce or increase, so that means when the turtle gets the command turn right, which degree of right turning should it be, in this case uh, 23.5 degrees. Um, we can also um, edit the setting of the leaves, for example, how are the leaves positioned on the stem, so basically this depends on the species, and we do have three options, that means alternate, so one leaf is on the left side, the next on the next node will be to the right side, and then again on the left side, or the opposite um, positioning, that means that we have two leaves on one node of the branch, so that means that they have two leaves at the same time, at the same level, or the world situation where you have plenty of leaves, if you like, on the same node. So they may have five leaves on the same node. And so if we want to um, re refresh this all and see the leaves, we have to turn on the... Um, oops, that was the wrong button. We have to turn on the drawing of the individual leaves. And then you see, okay, this is uh, of course not a realistic situation for such a tree. Um, how your settings of the leaves, so go back to um, alternate position, how you can define the position of the leaves, and you can also define the size of the tree um, leaves, so if I was the diameter, or how long is the petiole, so that's actually the little stem where, with which the leaf is attached to the stem, so you can make that pretty long if, if this is typical for the tree. So now it's a little growing, and you can also change the size of the leaves. So there are pretty much information uh, if, you if you like to go into detail. And in the end of it all, Envimet will calculate the trees, um, stems, and it will calculate the trees' leaves, which are in a grid box. And this is what we finally see if we turn on the um, show rusted leaves. So this is what we find in the end in the database, um, just like in the original Envimet trees, um, the leaf area density per grid to be used in the in the Envimet model. So for the moment in spaces you do not see the, the skeleton of the tree that will, will come in the next year when we also publish the tree pass. Um, but you will see the much more elaborated um, structure of the leaves and this might be a point to another new feature that has been introduced with version 5 um, that we have a new advanced radiation scheme um, the ACRT scheme that you can enable, which also now includes the multiple reflection of radiation inside the tree canopy. And it also includes the changing of direct radiation to diffuse radiation within the canopy stands. But that's a different topic of its own. So, a very brief introduction. And of course, there will be much more information about how to use this L system, much more information about how to go from a leaf um, and a tree structure we observed to a um, handmade tree. But hey, give it a try. It's not very um, 
not very complicated, although it seems strange at the beginning, but it's very easy. We tried that with a lot of students and after just a few hours they were able to produce treats, whatever they like, using these L systems. So thank you for watching.